Hey guys, Ryan here. Thank you for joining me for another video. In this one, I want to talk about how you can check if your keywords, meaning your brand, your title, your bullets, or your description, if they contain bad words, if they contain trigger words, words that will get your submission to Amazon Merch rejected. This is all in an attempt to keep your account safe because if you get enough rejections, your account will get suspended and it's usually permanently. So you want to stay away from rejections altogether if possible. Now, I'm also going to close the video by showing you a tool that will do automated trademark protections because if you didn't know, you can have a listing that's been live over a period of time and didn't infringe on anybody's intellectual property and then a trademark can go live, let's just say two years after you first sold the product and all of a sudden, your products, all of them that include that set of keywords that just got trademarked, will get pulled down and you'll receive strikes against your account for it. So keeping your account safe, it's no small task and it's a challenge that all print on demand sellers face. So in this video, I'm gonna number one, show you how you can do research for your new product listings to make sure that they're gonna be safe. And then part two, I'm just gonna show you how you can do some maintenance to keep your account safe as it grows and scales over time. So I'm gonna go jump on my computer and we'll get started. Guys, I don't know how this is working, but somehow I have a green shirt on in front of a green screen and there's no issues. So knock on wood that there's not gonna be any problems for the rest of this video. <laughs> All right, this is part five of my Amazon Merch mini series. I'm gonna show you if it's safe or not to use specific keywords and designs in your Amazon Merch submissions. Because when you submit your design, if it goes to under review, it's typically not a good thing. Or if, I mean, they all go to under review, but if it stays there for more than a few minutes, not a good indicator, unless you're in tier 10, in which case I'm pretty sure they all stay in under review for a while just to make sure that you um, know the ropes and you're not infringing or anything like that. Because I think it happens a lot more commonly in the 10 tier. Real quick for the new, Listeners, I'm Ryan Hogue. I've sold over $1.6 million on Amazon, including 250000 through Merch by Amazon. If you want to follow the links in the description, I've got a free seven-day Amazon Merch mini course. You get, it gets delivered via email um, every day for over seven days. I've also got an Amazon Merch Facebook community. I'd love to have you there. we got an active discussion going on every day, lots of discussions. Also, I publish passive income reports on the first or second day of each month. I'm planning on trying to drop mine tomorrow on July 1st for the month of June. You can follow my progress as a uh, Amazon merch seller, FBA seller, KDP seller, etc. each month by hitting subscribe or joining my email list. Last but not least, I wrote a full Amazon merch course. It's over, well, it's almost 60 lectures and it's a full knowledge transfer of everything I've learned over three and a half years on the platform in tier 20,000 currently. All right, let's jump back into things. So are your keywords safe to use? This means in your brand, your title, your bullets, your description, they all get scrutinized by the merch algorithm. And if they determine that something is up with what you submitted, it may go to under review or may get an instant rejection. So we want to avoid that. And there's a couple things we can do to try to prevent any problems. Although for the record, short answer, the only way to really know is to hit the submit button, but we don't want to do that blindly because our merch accounts are valuable and we don't want to put them at risk. All right, so the first thing I wanna recommend, I wrote a free tool, I call it my search merch tool. Now, I do wanna clean up the web page. just saying that, I'm planning on doing that sometime in the near future, cause it's a little bit busier than it needs to be. Essentially, the search merch tool, which is completely free to use public on my blog, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, all you do is you type in your keywords into the search bar, and then you click the button for the product type you wanna search. In doing so, and by the way, the niche I'm gonna use is, I've gotten this question a lot over the last month because this has been the top selling print on demand niche. And actually this is gonna serve a really good example for this video. I don't wanna spoil anything, but bear with me. So people have asked, is Black Lives Matter as a print on demand niche or as keywords, is that trademarked? Is it protected? Is it safe? So I went ahead, I typed in the keywords, I clicked search t-shirts, and we got results, but what does this really mean? Is it safe, is it not safe? It's still not telling us much. By the way, when you use my search merch tool, instead of just searching on Amazon, it filters out non-Amazon merch listings. Now, since we're attempting to sell through Amazon merch and we go through additional scrutiny selling through merch than we would selling through Seller Central or on other platforms, this makes a lot of sense. You know, Filter out non-Amazon merch listings and just show me what I need to see, which is merch. Now, here's the thing. You see in the top left corner there, I put a big arrow and circled. It says this is one through 48. 
of 489 results. So when you see almost 500 results, to me, that signifies almost always that the niche is safe to sell in, all right? But this is just one way of running a test, all right? So this is it, highlighted it again. It says one through 48 of 489 results for Black Lives Matter. And again, we are looking at standard t-shirts published through Amazon Merch that are live. There could also be some that aren't live. All right, the other way, and I would recommend doing both of this, by the way. If you're unsure, then especially do both. You can go to tmsearch.uspto.gov. I know this page looks busy and it might be a little intimidating if you've never seen it before, but this is really where you want to spend some time. It's not even hard to use. When I say spend some time, it's like once you've done it a couple times, it takes like a minute or less. Just bookmark it. So where it says search term, enter your search terms there. I put Black Lives Matter and then I hit submit query. Now, uh uh-oh, that's a lot of content here on on this search results page. Here's the thing, in that far right column right here that I'm pointing at, you want to check every record that's an exact match and that is live. So what I ended up doing, and I, I didn't screenshot it here, but typically what I'll do in my web browser, if you're on Windows at least, I do Control F and then I type out exactly what I searched because you can see here that there's partial string matches. It's not just exact matches. So if you're on like Amazon advertising, this would be like partial, um, what do they call it, phrase match. There's a lot of phrase match. And then there's also some broad match that would be included here as well. We just need the exact match. Okay, well, also, just to complicate things a little bit more, let me just put a disclaimer out there. Amazon Merch's uh, algorithm that determines whether or not something is okay or isn't okay, it's not perfect. So you may be technically, on from a legal perspective, okay and it still may reject you. So it's it's a gray area. But for what we're looking at here, you see uh, there's five live records, and it's tough to see, but there's five that are an exact match, just Black Lives Matter as I typed it, that have a live indicator on the right column. So I opened up all five of those because you can't take shortcuts. You have to open up all of them. Now, here's where we want to look. You see this above me here with the arrow? It says goods and services. Now, this one says bracelets, earrings, bracelets, et cetera, et cetera. It's basically jewelry, jewelry, charms. What I'm really looking for is t-shirts, apparel, something of that nature. Now this is just jewelry. So what does that mean? That means we can't use it in any jewelry. All right, perfect. So we're not looking to sell jewelry anyways right now. We're looking to selling it through a Amazon merch t-shirt. Next record, providing information in the field of human rights. All right, that doesn't say t-shirt, so we're good. Next one, headwear for men, women, and children, hooded sweatshirts for men, women, adults, t-shirts for adults, women, men. Uh Uh-oh, now we've got a bit of an issue. Also, I just wanted to, I didn't circle it, but look at the filing date, all right? This is going to be a little bit interesting, and I probably should have swapped this slide with the, the next one, but filing date june 8 2020 so people realize there's a little bit of a gold rush here to this niche i know it sounds bad to say i'm not the one that's going after this i don't sell any i don't have any trademark attempts at this like i'm just letting it go i'm just reporting it to you guys right because i know it's a little bit touchy but june 8th someone tried to trademark black lives matter but the goods and services is what matters here because clearly other people have trademarked it as well so we can't use it on hats i didn't put a little cross out because someone else It's after this. Okay, no, this one. So here we go. Black Lives Matter. Filing date, June 9th, the next day. All right? And it says retail clothing, movies, television, sticker, place cards, cable. So this guy is trying to also trademark it on even broader items. But clearly we see uh, retail clothing. That would be enough to scare me out. Um, Also, it said stickers, so no stickers. And boom, another one on June 8th. So between June 8th and June 9th, three attempts at trademarking it basically on apparel. This guy said athletic apparel, namely shirts, pants, jackets, footwear, hats, caps, athletic uniforms. Here's the thing. These are not live. Like they say live, but getting a, and I'm not a lawyer. I do have two in my immediate family. So I I know a little bit about this. Plus I've been selling print on demand for over three years, three and a half years at this point, closer to four, I think. So I've been around this stuff for a while. I'm not a lawyer though, disclaimer. But like when you see filing date, June 8th, 2020, and I'm recording this on June 30th, 
it takes quite a while to get trademarks live, even if you are a lawyer, because it has to go through like a period where it's filed for opposition. Like people can oppose you getting what you want to trademark it on, which clearly is going to be a problem because three people are trying to get it on uh, t-shirts. And there's also after that, like it has to go through the US Patent and Trademark Office. It just takes time. It takes a little bit of time. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. But in summary, this is not safe to use. And those 489 live listings on Amazon Merch, whenever one of these, if, if, slash when any of these records get like truly live, th they're going to get pulled down. So it's going to be, it's going to just go like that. It's going to disappear overnight. All right. So, you know, whoever owns this bestseller here with 73 reviews, uh, yeah, that's going to, that's going to be a bad day, you know, because they're raking it in right now. All right, just wanted to also make you guys aware that you can use Merch Informer's trademark alerts. So a lot of you guys are already on Merch Informer. This is the most popular niche research tool for really Amazon Merch specifically, but Amazon Merch to me is representative of the world's largest e-commerce marketplace. So it's like if it's selling well on Merch, if it's a good niche on Merch, it's probably a good niche on Redbubble, Etsy, wherever else you want to sell. So I, for me personally, I always prioritized my niche research process on what was selling on Amazon. I'm not saying you have to have Merch Informer, by the way. I'm just saying that like, if you have it, there's also something called trademark alerts. And the way this works, it's so easy to use. You just copy paste your, or type in your uh, phrase, keywords, whatever, that you want it to automatically search for. When you hit save, it'll add it to a list. Now, I only added one term here, but you can add, I think like up to a thousand, if not more, and it'll check them every single day against um, the trademark database. Because like I said, you might be that guy from four slides back selling the bestseller Black Lives Matter t-shirt and all of a sudden your bestseller's just wiped out. And that's a strike against his account as well. But if he has this alert, he may get alerted, hey, you need to delete that shirt immediately because that algorithmic sweep that Amazon does is eventually gonna catch it. All right, last but not least, I wanted to wrap this video by just touching on international trademarks. As of recording this video, uh, you cannot publish still to the U.S. markets. It's still frozen due to the Cerveza sickness. Got to dodge the censors. Um, but the U.K. and German markets are open. So you still got to do your due diligence with trademarks over there because they, they will still reject your submissions if you violate them with a weird keyword. You know, I've had it happen. I've had it happen in random designs, like super random. Um, not going to go into what they were, but it's like you translate it and then all of a sudden like UK is good, US is good, German market rejected, you know, who knows why. All right, so uh, if you go to the resource on Amazon Merch, by the way, that's where I took this screenshot, they link you to a couple different places you can do uh, trademark checks for United States, UK, Germany. Uh, just wanted to show you that if you go to the UK, if you're publishing to UK, click that link. Um, I believe I clicked the first one, UK IPO. And then click services, search for trademark, then go to right here above me, keyword, phrase, or image from the next screen. This is basically the equivalent of that landing page for the USPTO, uh, tmsearch.uspto.gov that I showed you earlier for the United States. But where it says search words, type in your words, hit enter, boom, it returns very similar results, although their website's definitely better in my opinion. Um, German, okay, so the... <laughs> This link, uh, you may just, I'll put it in the description, I guess, because I had to do some digging to get this link. The links on the merch resource were not helpful, and I had to kind of click around for two, three, four minutes just to find this tool, which is actually what I needed. And uh, with this, you can just type in what you're searching for, and it will return, if there is anything. Um, it, again, it's gonna be in German, by the way. So if you search in English, there's a chance it could be trademarked in English, but most likely no. Like the way I searched was I typed in the English word funny because I figured that was the highest likelihood of getting some results and I did see some, but most of them are going to be in German. So make sure you translate. And then also, I believe this is European European Union uh, and I think it might be a separate, I'm not, I'm not a legal expert, especially not international trademarks, but this TM view, you'll notice that if you went back to the merch resource, UK and Germany both had links to this. So I think this is... Uh, maybe a separate database worth checking if you want to be super safe just type in your keywords hit search boom super easy to use super quick i'll put a link in the uh, description for you actually i mean it's also in the merch resource but all right next time guys part six i'm gonna go through some product design best practices 
This is straight out of the merch resources again because we only need to go through it once. After that, we know it, but it's definitely worth paying attention to because if you can like lock in really good best practices from the start, like really good habits from the start, you're gonna thrive long term. So we're gonna go over the product design best practices. All right, thank you so much for watching till the end. All that I ask, if you like this video, just hit the like button, let the YouTube algorithm know. And if you're not subscribed, somehow the majority of you guys still aren't subscribed, do me a huge favor, hit the big red button. If you wanna be alerted the next time I drop a video, by the way, hit the bell icon and YouTube will let you know. But thank you guys, have a good night. I'll see you at the next one. Passive Income School is open. Enroll now at ryansmethod.com. Thank you.